Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. And this is an immigration video. Um, as always, consult an immigration lawyer for details. I'm not here to give advice. I'm just here to share information. Um, so make sure your immigration lawyer, when you find them, is registered. And as usual, you can get them from the Law Society, Home Office, Citizens Advice Bureau, and those kind of places. So um, what I wanted to, I saw a question in one of my vlogs. Um, it said, if, if my wife divorces me or if my spouse dies, will they take back my indefinite leave to remain status? The short answer is no, they won't if your spouse dies or you get divorced because indefinite leave to remain is not based on any relationship. It's totally different from a spouse visa or a family visa, which relies on the relationship of the person you came into the country with that's stated on your visa. So that's it in a, short, in a nutshell, but it can still be taken away under certain circumstances. So an indefinite leave to remain is a form of settled status dependent, independent of your partner and divorce or death or your spouse should not affect your stay in the UK. So regardless of what happens to your spouse, as long as you have indefinite leave to remain, it shouldn't affect your stay in the UK. However, some people, they think they have a indefinite leave to remain because they're on a spouse visa or a family visa and when they go out of the country and come in they're not really stopped there's not really too much questioning so they assume they have an indefinite leave to remain because they don't know the technical differences it is important to check to see um, how your what your status is when your visa was granted and the conditions of your stay um, then, only then can you know whether your visa is dependent on your relationship status. Like a spouse visa, that means you're dependent on your spouse in order to stay in the country. Family visa, you're dependent on the circumstances of the family situation in order to remain in the UK. So, if you don't have an indefinite leave to remain status at the time your spouse dies, you can technically apply for an ILR any time after your partner's death. You don't have to wait for your visa to lapse or to expire. But you must be in the UK to apply and the cost is a hefty £2,404. A lot of money. A spouse visa is granted based on the relationship you have with your partner you are required to show that the relationship is genuine and subsisting and that you intend to live together permanently. If your right to live in the UK depends on your relationship with someone who died or you got a divorce from, you may have to apply for a new visa. Please, like I said, consult an immigration lawyer for things like that. Also, if you don't have a valid form of leave or qualify for mitigating circumstances, you could have your spouse visa revoked and be required to leave the UK to prevent sham marriages because otherwise, I mean, if you're in the country based on your marriage to a particular person and that marriage breaks down, you can't stay in the country because your, your spouse visa was based on that individual. Otherwise, you could stay in the country the relationship could break down and you could marry who and whoever. So they're trying to avoid sham marriages. So that's why if a marriage breaks down and you want a spouse visa, you will be required in certain circumstances to leave the country. So you're in, you're, you are required to inform the Home Office immediately after the breakdown of a relationship. A lot of people try to avoid that because they know it means that they've got no say in the stay of the country and they don't want to go back. But you will risk the rejection of any immigration applications if you, if you don't inform them and they find out afterwards that the relationship 
went down the pan. So the advantage of holding an indefinite leave to remain is that you are no longer dependent on a spouse, fiancé or sponsor. And you don't have to pay immigration health surcharge, which is a lot of money a year. And you, you have no immigration restrictions. So what are the ways you can lose your indefinite leave to remain? Well, you won't lose it if you get divorced or if your spouse dies. That's one thing. It is possible to lose your indefinite leave to remain if you breach the conditions of your stay. For example, you lied on the application form. You've been convicted of a criminal offence. You've been absent from the, from the UK for two or more years. And in that case, your ILR will automatically lapse. If your indefinite leave to remain lapses for this reason, and you want to apply as a returning resident, it means turning back the clock and starting all over again. And you'll need to be aware of the following criteria used to reinstate your indefinite leave to remain. It'll depend on the strength and nature of your ties to the UK, the length of the original residence in the UK, the length of time spent outside the UK and the circumstances for staying abroad, whether you're willing to continue living in the UK permanently and other compelling factors. Like, you know, you had ILR before you left, that kind of thing, and providing you haven't been deported at any time. Public expense. So it may be the case that you do not realise <coughs> your leave has relapsed until you're at the UK border. And that's going to be difficult because they can refuse you entry. And you'll be returned to your country of origin. Other ways you can lose your indefinite leave to remain and may be required to leave the UK is if your indefinite leave to remain is revoked due to being liable for deportation or if you're no longer deemed a refugee by reason of your own actions, or you have obtained, like I said, your indefinite leave to remain by deception. If you are deported from the UK, it is likely, very likely, that your indefinite leave to remain will be invalidated. So look at it this way. If a person born in the UK can be deported, and that's the reason why you want to have British citizenship as opposed to indefinite leave to remain. Because I think what this gentleman was saying is that he was a bit worried that if he got a divorce or if his wife died, he might lose his indefinite leave to remain. That's not the case, not based on that. So he wanted to opt for British citizenship. So British citizenship like I said, you know, if, you're, if it's naturalised, you've got just as risk of being deported or sent back to your original country as anyone else. And even if you're born in a country, but your parents are not, you still run the risk if you commit a crime, a serious crime, of being returned to your parents' country. And we all saw that with Shemaima Begum. So, um, people born in this country... OK, I've said that. Although indefinite leave to remain confers the holder with additional rights and protection, it is not a permanent status like British citizenship. People think, oh, I've got indefinite leave to remain. I can do whatever I like. You know, it's not going to lapse. I'm cool. No, there are limitations on it. So, um, and that is why some people opt for British citizenship because at least that way you know it doesn't lapse you can get the country for as long as you like and it's not going to lapse so is it worth getting British citizenship well no restrictions for life like I said um, having British citizenship should protect you from endless scrutiny and vigorous questioning at airports and border control areas. Although the life in the test, life in the UK test is extremely difficult because it requires knowledge of historical, political and social events, citizenship might afford you some protection and security. The fact of the matter is whether you have a British citizenship or indefinite leave to remain, there is no guarantee that you will not be asked to leave the UK in the future if you're found guilty of committing a crime or face a prison term. 
being married to a British citizen, especially if it is a subsisting and genuine relationship, could be a route to indefinite leave to remain. If you entered the country based on being their partner on a spouse or family visa. However, if the Home Office find that it was a sham marriage, your spouse, family, indefinite leave to remain could be revoked. So if you are an indefinite leave to remain holder or are applying for indefinite leave to remain, it is important to be aware of the indefinite leave to remain expiry rules and how indefinite leave to remain status can be lost or revoked. And even your documentary proof of status has expired. Some people don't think about that. And that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you just take it for granted that you have indefinite leave to remain. So you don't have to worry about anything. You have to make sure that all your documentation is still valid. Um, only in the following limited circumstances could you be exempt with indefinite leave to remain expiry rule. But I'm not going to tell you what those are. You can ask your solicitor. Otherwise, this video will take forever. But if you attempt to re-enter the UK with expired indefinite leave to remain and without a returning resident visa, having been granted or any other grant of entry under another relevant visa category, you could be refused entry and you would have to return to your country of origin. Given the significance of the two-year rule on your UK immigration status and travel rights, you will need to be certain of the length of your absence from the UK and whether the indefinite leave to remain expiry rule applies to you before you travel to the UK. So two years can go pretty quick. By the time you turn around, you don't even realise it's gone. So you have to be very careful and take note. You should review your travel history, checking travel documents, tickets and your passport for visa and immigration stamps issued before you're, you were granted indefinite leave to remain. Remember also that your indefinite leave to remain will expire after two years of absence, regardless of the expiry date on your proof of indefinite leave to remain, such as the BRP or passport stamp. So I hope that helps. Um, you understand whether or not you can lose your indefinite leave to remain and in what circumstances you can. And that's all for now. Bye bye.